Hello, I'm Skid from the Widescreen Gaming Forum. Today I'm going to be giving you a look at Elsewood. Now, Elsewood is, well, it's a 2.5D uh, side-scrolling action brawler. Uh, it's probably the best way to describe it. And as you might be able to tell, there's some issues with multi-monitor support. Um, the most glaring of which is all UI is basically stretched to fit the screen. Um, I did bring this up with the developers, but um, they basically just turned around and said that the game was designed to be run on a single screen. So I pointed out to them that because they're stretching it, this means that effectively the UI will only actually be correct. I apologise if you can hear the cars going past my windows. Um, that the UI will only ever be correct in a single aspect ratio and that people with so like 4x3 monitors or people with um, cinema uh, aspect ratio monitors would have exactly the same issue. And if you're developing a game for a PC, you really shouldn't stretch the HUD. It's really bad design because, as I said, it means that it only is actually correct on a single aspect ratio. And they deleted the thread. So that's not a good start. Now, I'll quickly show you the characters. There's basically five of them here and they all play slightly differently. Um, there's five, no, there's six, I can't count. Um, so yeah, um, there are limited character slots because this is a free-to-play game, but I'll get into that. Uh, I've chosen this character here because she's the mage class. Uh, she's an archer. I think he's a sword wielder. Um, they're all slightly different, um, and they have different abilities and they behave differently, but this one is the one I've gone for, as I said, because she's a sorcerer, and she's the only sorcerer. Now that's a bit better, isn't it? 3D does render horizontal plus, which is... Very nice, if it weren't for all of the HUD stretching all over the place. Um, when you're actually in level, it's not too much of an issue because really you only see the health bars and then text is all fine and then you've just got this bit at the bottom here, which I, yeah, this bit here, uh, that is span, but you can move that if we go to the options, that's very limited. Uh, others, where is it? There's a button here. There it is, skill slot UI, which then puts them up here. So they're now entirely out of the way. But I keep them down there just because it shows me their cooldown and it also gives me an idea of how much mana I have so I don't have to look up here to see it. Um, if the UI really does bother you, you can always just turn this off and you can get away with it turned off. Um, you can normally have a fair idea. Um, health or health bars are still rendered underneath the characters. I don't think it's rendered underneath yours, so the only thing you can't really see is effectively when your spells are off cooldown or your abilities if you're not a spellcaster um, or how much mana you have left. So, as this is a free to play game, I suppose I should quickly go into the cash shop. Now, in fact, that's a lot of quests that it tells me I can quick clear that I haven't completed. That's better. It's being derpy. Bugs everywhere. Yeah, that's being unfair. There's only a few bugs. Now, as this is a free-to-play game, as you might imagine, uh, the, again, I apologise for the stretchiness of this, um, the cash shop is a primary source of revenue. Now, I have bought some cash shop money just for the purpose of this video and because I've, I've played this game for 14 hours. Um, so it's kept me interested, but I'll get to whether or not I like it in a bit. So the first lot you've got is your costumes, and then you've got some accessories. Now, this game, there is a PvP element on it, and I think that's effectively half of the game. And it would be reasonable to say that it's pay to win. Now, if you have a look at these costumes, you'll see that they have set effects and the costumes themselves actually give you bonuses. Now these are fairly minor, particularly compared to effectively uh, this costume I'm wearing here was given to me. It's one of my, I can't bring up the inventory, uh, that and that, nope, that and that. I'll get there eventually. Um, this costume here is basically my first promotion, uh, class promotion. Uh, costume and I get to keep it for I think it was 15 days. I've got 10 days left on it. Well near enough 11 um, But it has a nice set of, or a set of boosts on it. So you get given some costumes This one here is the one that I started with if I quickly change over So that's my starting costume that will have less time on it. I think yeah, that one's one day left So this one's almost run out and then I can't use that anymore 
so you do get given costumes. Um, I'm very close, in fact I'm level 35, which means that I can get my next class change, uh, which is what this um, quest here is all about. Now you'll notice this is one of five. Um, if I want to class up, then I'm going to have to complete five different quests to do it. Now, when I went from Standard Mage to Battle Mage, which is the class I am at the minute, that wasn't too bad. Um, I think it probably took me about five levels. I think I, I could class change it either 15 or 20. And it took me five levels to complete all of the um, quests and then I could um, use this class. Now, that said, if I bring up the skill window, since I've classed up, I've actually not gained any new skills. Now there's a very specific reason for this. This line here is where I was at the end of my last class. So before I classed up, those were all the skills that I had access to, all of these here. So these two is the first line of my new class. Now you'll notice there's a padlock on here. Now this padlock means that I can't use this unless I've completed the quest or purchased an item through the item mall. You can guess where this is going. Now I did that at level 20. I'm now level 35 and ready to class change again. So I've been doing the quest basically, I've been going through uh, each area and completing all of the quests that I have there and then moving on to the next one. And I think I was probably, was I still on here? No, I think I had moved on. I think I was on this one here, uh, this dungeon here, when I got that quest. So. From level 20 I've done all of these, all of these, and I've now done that one, that one, that one, and this one a bunch of times. And I've only just... Uh, is it on this list? Nope. It's on here. Basic training. So I've only just got to the last part of this quest, which needs me to presumably kill... Well, it says Secret Book of um, Liberation. So I suspect that's a drop. And I'm betting anything that's a random drop. So yeah, they are heavily betting that the it's like you will not want to level up the skills or get new classes through the quest just because they made it so damn long. Now, I don't have any inherent problem with that kind of logic, but this is taking the piss. I mean, as I said, I was level 20 and I am now ready to class change again. And because the way I want to set up my skills requires this and not this, I haven't been able to get any of these skills, so look, I've got 30 points here unspent because I've tried to un unlock that. It's just an absurdly long amount of time, and yeah, I really don't appreciate that. I have no problem with the concept, but they're pushing the limits. I really shouldn't be too surprised, this is an Asian MMO, and it kind of does do that. Now you'll also notice here, Dimension Witch Pendant. Now this is actually my next class, um, so what I'm actually planning on doing is I'm planning on buying this just to unlock the next class before I finish the quest for it, because I can't be bothered to go through all of that again. Um, so yeah, there's some other things in here. You can also have pets. You get a pet by default, but there's a little bit of a kick in the teeth with that. Um, you'll notice here there's an affinity and a hunger bar. If you fill affinity, then your pets will um, evolve. Now unfortunately, once Affinity gets past this bar here, um, so I should explain this a little bit better, um, basically your pet's Affinity will increase while um, its hunger is above this line here and you go on a quest and its Affinity will increase. And then once you reach this point here, I mean uh, before this point here, you can basically feed it equipment. So all of this junk here, I can feed it that to... Um, increase its hunger so that its affinity increases. But I can't feed my pet iron, I need to summon him. I can't feed him now with any of this because he's entered a special state and I can only feed him with uh, tree fruits or seeds. Now the seeds you can only get through quests and I got one earlier today so if I wanted to I could evolve him. Uh, where is it? There it is. So I could feed him that seed and then that would increase his affinity to maximum and I could probably evolve him in fact. I will, yeah, I will see if it is enough. I'm planning on buying a different pet anyway. So that increases his hunger. Yeah, after my next mission he should be able to evolve. 
So we'll leave him like that at a minute. So before I go into the cash shop then, uh, we'll very quickly start going through... Um, we'll try and do this quest here to see if we can unlock that skill first. So I'm now backtracking. A uh, fairly heavy amount, but we'll see how things go. Now, I've never had to wait all that long to get into a dungeon, but the game's only relatively freshly out, so that's not too surprising. But I suspect as it goes on, less people are playing it, then it may become harder to get a um, party. But technically you don't have to do it in party, you can just launch it. But there we go. We've got a party and... There we go, we're starting the dungeon. So this is the meat of the game. Let me zoom out a bit. And you basically go through areas and kill all the monsters in them, or creeps or whatever you wish to call them, and then you can move on to the next area. Now, there is a fundamental problem that I have with the game, and that is its difficulty, in that I have never died, despite pretty much always playing on the hardest difficulty, the um, very hard difficulty, I have never died once during these standard um, dungeons. None of them have challenged me. It's basically just mash the buttons until they all fall down. Which in a way is cathartic, but there's just no challenge in it. There are challenges in the game, but they're not in the standard dungeons, and that's kind of disappointing. I will hopefully be able to show you one of the more challenging things in the game um, after I've completed this, assuming that it gives me the... Um, have I disconnected? No, they're still moving. I want to be over here. The game isn't bad looking, but uh, let me turn dynamic camera off because it doesn't really do the game any justice. The um, camera moving close in or moving in specific positions Yeah, the camera moving into specific positions um, when I use my more powerful attacks is the result of me having dynamic camera on. But yeah, uh, it doesn't particularly look very good. Particularly with all the screen stretching. Or hood stretching, I should say. So combat, in essence, comes down to uh, a few things. You have basic attacks heavy attacks and all of these can be comboed in certain ways. Can I bring up my skill tree? These are all standard attack combos. And then you also have your skills. As well as that you also can enter an awakened state which is kind of what just happened there, it's a fever or fever which is effectively a group wide awakened state. But you can charge a meter that's on the left hand or top left. And once it gets full then you can enter an awakened state and you move faster and you're more powerful. But beyond that that's pretty much it. So there's some depth to the combat, but because there's pretty much no challenge whatsoever. So, yeah. Because there's no challenge whatsoever um, in the combat, then it can drag on a bit and pretty much the game's worn itself out for me now. I mean, I was very determined to make to effectively get that skill just to see how long it would take. And it's probably taken me about six, eight hours. But the game's okay, I suppose. If it was more challenging, it would be better, but... It, just as a beat-em-up, just a waste a bit of time, it's alright. 
it's a free to play game anyway so you can always give it a try and see whether or not you like it but yeah and in, in my opinion it's just way too easy I've not really had much issue in terms of disconnects. I mean, I've disconnected once, I think, and I'm thinking throughout my time playing, I've probably only seen about 10 other people disconnect. Um, there's been some people that have left in the middle, but generally you can tell when someone disconnects because the game effectively has to wait for you or wait for everyone to get into the um, area cleared zone so you can move on to the next area. So if you end up waiting a long time, it's usually a good indication that someone disconnected. So now we're on to the boss battle and we find out whether or not I get the item first time round or not. So that's me awakening. And that's the boss dead. And that's the fundamental problem. Um, the fastest I've seen a boss die with people probably about or a little bit above the level that it should be. Um, the fastest I've seen them go down was probably about three seconds. They got annihilated in. So yeah, that's not particularly good. And you earn EXP at the end. Um, basically clear rank are just I'm not sure what rank... Oh, rank is effectively because it's hard. Party because you're talking to party. MVP means that um, I was potentially the... I don't think it means most... I think it's most valuable player. Did I get the item? I did not get the item. What do you know? Right, never mind. So, let's skip some stuff. We shall... Can I buy this? Upon purchasing this, you're... Yes. You may not continue any classes after job changes, you will not be allowed to... Yep, that's fine. Only one. There we go. And I've been... Yep, I've been given a letter, which presumably means... So yep, that's cleared that. So if I pop over to the mailbox, if I can remember where it is in this map... Where is it on this map? There it is. Then, I believe... Is that the one? Is this going to give me what I think it's going to give me? Yep. So here's a new costume for my new class. And what's the time or time out for this? Uh, again, 15 days. So change into that. I don't know if it's any better. Uh, no, they're identical. So that's basically just, it looks different. So that's basically just what the official class image looks like. However, yesterday I also got this little cube here. Now this is a costume you can buy from the cash shop. Now I did actually have a look through all of the... Um, little sailor uniform. I did actually look through all of the um, uniforms or the costumes in the cash shop and there aren't really any that are any good really, not for this class. I mean the only real one that I kind of liked was... I mean there's some really stupid stuff in here as well. You've got bikinis for some un obscure reason. Wedding dress. 
And, uh, the one that I think works the best is actually the one that's been well, it's probably selling the best at the minute, and that's the um, the ninja outfit. But yeah, I have no intention of buying those. Now pets. Yay, he can evolve. So if we evolve a pet, then he basically becomes bigger, he becomes more useful. Um, he's pretty much entirely automated. So, in theory, I had to look this up, it didn't explain it very well. In theory, you can interact with your pet by saying things in chat and it will reply. And you can change its um, personality. And that will also define on, or that will also make him effectively used or I think it gives him access to different skills or he uses different skills at different times but um, yeah by leveling it up uh, he's got a little bit extra attack and defense so he's basically just a, a support he adds stats to you as in a way at least that's what I believe he does but yeah that's pretty much everything there's not a massive amount of the game um, is there anything I've missed? There is a crafting system in the game. In fact, no, that none of that is crafted. I was given all of that. I don't know why. Um, typically speaking, every area has a particular set of equipment. Um, that's actually not it. I don't have any to show you. Um, I will pop over to the blacksmith. So, yeah, here we go, craft. So, basically, this one here is the set of equipment I can get for this area. And you basically get a basic version of this, which you can then upgrade with a material, which you get for doing or completing the dungeons in this area, and then an item that you purchase from the shop. And that's generally, well, these ones here, they're generally not the absolute best. Excuse me, that's available, but they're pretty decent. But as I said, since the dungeons don't give any real challenge, excuse me, since the dungeons don't give any real challenge, then it's not really that necessary. I mean, if we have a look at this, uh, appropriate item level for this is 23, despite the fact the level is 33. Now, so far, uh, wrong button again. There we go, my average item level is 46, and that's just from stuff the game has given me. Um, so none of this is any upgraded stuff, I got this stuff just as a set for completing a quest, I can't remember which one it was. Um, but my average item level has pretty much always been 10 levels above um, what my current level is. So let's get some new skills. now. Because I really can't be asked to do that one over and over and over again. Can I not buy it anymore? Guillotine Fist, there it is. So we will purchase the skill, yes, despite the fact we've almost completed it. Okay, that should clear that quest and I should now be able to buy that. Yay, so let's level that up to max. The reason why I wanted this skill and why it's so important and why I think this was an absolute dick move absorbs the nearest enemy's mana points and ha or health points. HP absorbed will give additional damage, damage reduction will not be impacted. Now, as a caster, being able to grab MP or mana points from our target is kind of important. So yeah, there was a bit of being a bit of a dick. So, because I'm a battle mage, I will increase my passive strength. That's the second level of that. Um, that, I believe, yeah, increases duration of my buffs. Uh, before I forget, let's put that there, because I never use that one. This one increases my speed and attack speed, and is probably the best one for my class. Oh, yeah, uh, you see these four slots here? You can unlock them with a cash slot. Yeah, cash shop item. Um, but in reality, you don't really need them. Um, same with these down here. Uh, you can't use these item shops unless, shops unless you purchase an item from the item mall. Oh, and by the way, the bank is eight. You can only store eight items in the bank. 
so one line of stuff. And again, all of those can be expanded in the item mall. So, yeah, the game is pretty much a dick in terms of its cash shop. So, let's see. Ten more points. What do I want? Mana being fair, I think it's that. Guillotine press is a basic. Um, is a damage attack. Finesse. The knockdown rate is lowered. I don't think I actually want that. Hmm. I do have an item, a item. It gave me an item. I didn't actually have to purchase it, which is useful. Um, ooh, I can use that as well, which will give me five extra skill points. Where is that item? Do I still have it? There it is. Yeah, it gave me one item that I can't use. I've only got four days left to use uh, that will reset all my skill points. So again, that item is typically only available in the cash shop. So, that will increase damage while I'm recharging mana, which is potentially very useful. Uh, that only attacks directly above and below me, so that's not that useful. Cast several fireballs simultaneously. That would be a magic type damage, yeah, not really interested. Heavy press. Guillotine press is probably going to be one of the better ones to grab. Magic makeup. That gives extra combos and things. We'll grab this one. Uh, use your staff to generate mana and release a giant circle. So that's a close range magic attack. There's guillotine press, I think, mean, jump high and strongly accelerate. You can't try any of these out before you buy them. And that even applies to unlocking them, so even if you unlock them, you still can't try them out. Or you can't try them out before unlocking them. But it's kind of implied that these are probably the better ones because they've locked them. So that's a lot of damage. But that kind of seems like it's supposed to be her ultimate attack. Plus it has m more versatility by the looks of it. So yeah, I bought some cash shop money so I didn't actually have to unlock those because I think they're dicks and they've effectively successfully got me to do what they wanted me to do in the first place and that's not want to buy or not want to grind those things out, so Magic Maker is the one I'm after. Oh, I should notice, um, this game is on Steam. However, uh, I'm not going to click this button because it actually glitches out the graphics in the game. Um, if you try and add cash through Steam and you're not in the USA, it won't let you. It basically says if you're in the or um, the only currency that this game can accept from your Steam wallet is you or United States dollars. So as someone in the UK, I can't actually buy the or use the Steam client. I have to go to their website to do it, which is what you would in theory have to do if you didn't download it through Steam anyway, but it's just something to bear in mind. So yep, buy that. Okay, so now I've got that skill. What did I else want? It? I wanted to buy one of those, didn't I? Just for the sake of it. I have cash and I have no intention of buying costumes. And that should be enough to level me up, level the pet up for a bit. The game does a bad job ex of explaining that this food, or more accurately the seeds, is only needed during the special stage, or while your pet is in the special stage. Doo -doo -doo. Unsummon. Petless. Nope. Where is it? It's 
hard to tell where these things get put. I may as well get that cube. It's probably going to be another three costume, is it? Yep, full casual set. So. Oh, that one's part of the casual set. I'm being pedantic about where everything's sitting. Let's move out of the group. Let's see what this is supposed to look like. Well, that isn't too bad. But I still prefer that. Because it's her class uniform. So where did that pet go? I did actually buy it, didn't I? Yep. So it's got to be somewhere. Maybe I need to log out. Or maybe I'm just being blind, so uh, let's use that while I remember. I have received an item. Ready? Where? I don't know where that pet's gone. That's not good. Oh, they're down here. That would explain things. So... Yep. So I can only use the name once. Ah, uh, that's a pain. Uh, I am not good with names. <laughs> I'm looking around. What is a good name? We'll just call it effectively the type of animal it is. There we go. So it's actually been summed as a life crystal. Um, basically, this is its first stage of evolution. Now, as I was saying earlier, it did a bad job of explaining this, but it gave me, when it gave me my first pet, um, 10 seeds. But it didn't tell me that I only needed to feed the pet those 10 seeds and that I could feed it equipment until then, um, once its affinity had reached there. So I ended up actually burning half my seeds, feeding it when I didn't need to be. So it did a really bad job of explaining that. So let's finish off acquiring skills. So there we go. And which one of these did I want? Impact Hammer, what does that one do? Magic Staff, when attacking with the staff, you have a chance of generating a shock of energy that deals additional damage. That's Increased to basic attack damage, isn't it, effectively? Whereas Impact Hammer is just a flat out damage or flat out damage type. I can probably backtrack to these because there's 70 levels. So I can probably acquire this later and I will grab this one now, I think. Since it's a passive. Oh, we only need three points. So 
So let's put a couple of points in there and we will, uh, that's directly in front of me isn't it, so will you place that one. Do it that way. Okay. Now let's try these out in... I will go skip that one despite the fact I've still got a quest to do in it, a story quest to do in it. In fact no, I think it's probably one of the latter story quests. Uh, second, so yeah we'll do this one again. Uh, this isn't a one to show you and I'll probably end the video after this. Oh no, cancel that actually. Said I wanted to show you a challenge. This is probably the best place to get a challenge. So let's see if there's any there. So while we wait, this um, character here is basically where you can start the PvP. So you can join an arena here, a 1v1 deathmatch or 3v1 deathmatch. Or uh, sparring. I'm not entirely sure what that's for. I presume it's just a friendly. Uh, I presume arena is ranked and sparring probably isn't. Uh, then you've got free training, which is basically just a um, uh, AI opponent. She does sell, sell a few things, so mostly she sells stuff that you can acquire through um, arena points. But I think she does have some special things, yeah. Uh, this basic training, intermediate training, advanced training, uh, you need, those items are typically required in order to um, progress the skill quests. But of course if you purchase the items from the cash shop you don't need to do that at all. I can't close that window down now. It's a pain. This particular challenge I did much earlier on and it was the only thing that I've ever needed to use a health potion on with the exception of the demon gate. Um, which again provided a reasonable amount of challenge but the basic dungeons just they're flat out too easy in my opinion. I mean if there's 60 levels in the game and I'm halfway through leveling up and I've never had to use a health potion then something is wrong with your balance. Okay, screw that. Uh, no one's obviously queuing for it, so we shall start with current members, which basically means me. So this challenge is basically as you might expect. Um, it's going to increase the um, boss difficulties. Well, the diff oh, I forgot to bind the skill, didn't I? I got a new skill that I wanted to keep. That one, uh, put it there. Because that one burns all my mana, doesn't it? Most of it. So I now have a full set of new skills to try out. Let's close that. So again, this is an early bot or one of the bosses for the early levels. I'm not sure if this boss has been scaled up, he's certainly not dying as quick as I would have expected him to. That's a good ah uh, yeah, I can't use items in this, can I? It's basically one life, live as long as you can. Damage is persistent unless you have an ability that lets you heal. Do I still have my speed buff? I don't know.
really any dodge with the exception of that one ability that I have that lets me dodge. So let's activate this and see what it does. Nope, that's the wrong button. That's the button. So at this point I can either quit and get any rewards that I want from here or continue but it's fully healed me so I'm going to keep going if I can, I'll give it a try. It's probably going to be better actually. Yeah, it probably would have been better if it wouldn't have taken so much longer to effectively have run all the um, high-level dungeons solo. That probably would have been a better way of doing it. Quick casting those lightning bolts. <laughs> no way to dodge them. Let's break this because it might have some food in it. What the hell hit me there? And I'm dead. <laughs> Not surprising considering it scaled for four people. But yeah, this is pretty much the only challenge I've ever had out of this game. The dungeons just, they were walk in the park. They've given me no challenge whatsoever. Which is really quite a pain. 
and no one appears to be doing that particular um, oh, challenge map which is also not particularly great but yeah so yeah as I said the game is free to play so you can always give it a try but honestly with a cash shop the spanned hood their attitude towards multi-monitor gaming um, there's definitely enough negative to me to say that it's probably worth the pass but yeah it's free to play give it a go see if you like it um, but yeah I think that pretty much covers it all so that's it from me thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time.